Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your weekly home for all things related to helping you on your journey to finding that amazing job. Each week I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, recruiters, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show which I had a decade ago when I graduated. So for episode 49 of the Graduate Job Podcast, I'm joined by Dave Spencer, CEO and co-founder of Police Now, the innovative new graduate scheme aimed at attracting top graduate talent into the police force. In this half hour, we explore their new graduate leadership development program, discussing what exactly the scheme entails, its intensive training, and what you'll be doing over your initial two years. We delve into the application process in detail, from the initial online application through to the Skype interview, role plays and assessment centre, looking at how you apply and more importantly, how to make sure your application stands head and shoulders above everybody else. If you've ever thought about a career in the police, then this is the episode for you. And even if joining the police has never crossed your mind, then you need to keep listening to understand why over half the people who joined them last year originally said they wouldn't have thought about joining the police, but for police now. As always, all links to everything we discuss and a full transcript are available in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash police now. Before we start, a quick request from me. Your feedback helps me to create the episodes you want to hear. So I've set up a super simple and very quick survey as I want the show to best serve your needs. It's got five questions and it'll take you just a minute. So please check it out at graduatejobpodcast.com slash survey. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, but in the meantime... Let's crack on with the show. I'm really pleased today to be speaking to Dave Spencer, CEO and co-founder of Police Now, the innovative new graduate scheme aimed at attracting top graduate talent into the police force. Dave, welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Thanks, James. Thanks very much for the invitation. It's great to be here. So before we delve into Police Now, Dave, would you like to first give us a taster of your background and how you came to co-found Police Now? Sure. Well, I've been a police officer now for about 12 years. Uh, and I've always worked in London doing that. I worked in some pretty tough and sort of challenging places in London. And myself and a colleague decided a couple of years ago that we wanted to do something different about how we brought people into policing and what we did with them when they were here. Uh, and our aim above and beyond everything else is to transform the most challenged and deprived communities that we work in. Uh, and to do that by reducing crime and increasing the public's confidence in policing. Uh, and the background to it is that Actually, there's some real issues in some of our most challenged and deprived communities. So if you're a child growing up in social housing, you're 37% more likely than other children to be a victim of crime. If your uh, dad has a criminal conviction and you're a boy, then there's a 70% chance that you'll end up with a criminal conviction as well. And if you're an oh. older person living in one of these most deprived and challenged communities, there's a 93% chance that you're going to be scared to go out after dark. 93% of older people in those communities are scared to go out after dark. And we really think that there's something that we can do about that. And police officers are on the front line of it. And by finding really brilliant people to come into policing, uh, this is how we can make a change for those people. Wow, some of those stats are scary. I didn't realise 70% of kids whose fathers have a criminal conviction if they're a boy then become a, um, likely to have a criminal conviction themselves. That's, uh, that's scary. It's really frightening, isn't it? And there is something that we can do about it. And our ethos our concept here at police now is that what we need is bright enthusiastic people who really want to problem solve and make a real difference in those communities can come in and make that difference for those young people and the older people living in those communities excellent so jumping straight in then to uh, to police now how does uh, how does the scheme work and what does it look like sure well it's a two-year program uh, and essentially you join us in the july in the summer uh, of the year, of the two years that you're going to spend with us, and you are a frontline police officer. So this isn't a desk job. This isn't spreadsheets and photocopying. This is two years on the front line of policing in one of those communities. So you spend your two years getting to know a single community and working on their behalf to try and transform the world around them, really. So you are the frontline crime fighter, the problem solver, 
the face of the police in that community. And the way that the program itself works is that you start with us on our summer academy and you spend six weeks, which is a really intensive training course where we give you uh, all of the tools that you need to get started as a police officer. And that's everything from personal protection, how to interview people, how to execute search warrants, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So everything that you might have seen on the TV or on film, then we teach you how to do that sort of stuff for real. Uh, you spend six weeks doing that, and then you go out into your local posting uh, where you'll be looked after by your line manager and your mentor, and you spend the first four weeks there uh, just getting to know things and know the people around you. And then over the rest of the two years, then we are developing you, working with you, with your leadership development officer and your line manager, so you can really develop your skills and deliver something really tangible in those places that you're working. And we've got officers in our first cohort this year who have been executing search warrants. So we had one who, uh, one of our participants is a police constable up in northwest London who pretty much uh, managed to crack one of North London's biggest drug criminal gangs uh, in her first year as a police officer. And if you can imagine the difference that that has made to the local people in that community, it's just massive. And, you know, those stories, there's so many of them just from our first cohort this year. Um, so you spend two years on the ground doing that, and we work with you to develop your skills. And then at the end of the two years, you can make a decision about what you want to do with yourself. You can either stay in policing in a frontline role. You can stay in policing as option two and uh, go for fast track promotion if you want to do that. Or you can uh, say, actually, I've done my two years. I've made a difference. Now I'm going to go and do something else. Uh, and we're working with a number of corporate partners, so we could um, work with you to enable you to get a route into one of their graduate programs potentially as well. Uh, and that's the two years on the program. And we've got people who uh, are just coming into their second year now, and they're already thinking about what they want to do at the end of the program, and some of them are going to be detectives, some of them are going to go and um, go for promotion to become sergeants or inspectors. And some of them are going to go and work for management consultants or a marketing agency. So there's a whole range of options at the end of the two years. And that's the great thing about the program, that your options are really open after two years. Brilliant. So for all intents and purposes, you're the full-on police officer. You're not a community support officer or something like that. You're the, doing the real deal. No, it's absolutely the real deal. On day one of the Summer Academy, you are tested and you take your oath as a police constable. So you are a full police officer from day one. And there's all of the powers and all of the responsibilities that go with that. So right from day one, you are able to arrest people and you're able to execute search warrants. Obviously, we wouldn't advise that you go off and do that straight away on day one. But you are in that with those powers that exist for all police officers. Um, but they come with really great responsibilities as well. So, you know, police officers are responsible for upholding the law and keeping people safe and particularly keeping vulnerable people safe. Um, so right from day one, that's your responsibility. So for people who are thinking or have been thinking about police as a profession, what are the advantages of joining police now as opposed to going down the, the normal application? Route? Sure. Well, police now is unique in policing in that our training is incredibly intense, but it is delivered by expert frontline individuals who are they're just real experts in their craft. So. Um, our training, we get outside speakers in who are visiting fellows to our summer academy. So if we're going to teach you about, for example, how to deal with someone who might have mental health problems, uh, then actually we find the best people in the country around that. So a police officers who are experts in dealing with people with mental health problems and members of the local uh, community mental health trust who come in and lecture and teach you about that. If we're teaching you about... Um, how to execute search warrants and develop intelligence and that sort of stuff, which officers will be doing in their first two years. We get the experts from outside to do it, and it's really intense. So, you know, it's no sitting back and relaxing during that summer academy. So that's the first difference. The second difference is that you spend two years in a single community making a real difference to those people's lives. So rather than lots of moving around and you might feel after a little while that you don't necessarily... You're not necessarily able to demonstrate your impact. In our program, you spend two years in one place, and we ask you every 100 days, how are you having an impact in your community? So at the end of two years, you know the difference that you've made, and that's a real difference as well. And then the final difference 
is probably that you are part of a cohort of really brilliant people who are all working together to make a real difference. And it's just fantastic when we get our cohorts together and it's just a, a real feeling of family and they're sparking off each other and great conversations and solving problems together. And that's, a, that's just wonderful to see and you'll be part of that Police Now family. And location-wise, whereabouts in the country uh, in the UK are you based at the moment? So our first cohort, so 2015 cohort, started and they were all based in London. For our second cohort that have just started with us, the 2016 intake, they're going to seven parts of the country. So that's London, Lancashire, West Midlands, uh, Surrey, Thames Valley, Northamptonshire. Uh, and so they're, they're going to seven parts of the country. And then the cohort for next year, so the people that will be applying to the programme this autumn, um, it'll be, I think there's about 18 to 20 parts of the country that you can go to, 18 to 20 different forces. Uh, and that's everywhere. You know, west, you're talking about over in Somerset, so you're talking about Bristol, you're talking about London, you're talking about the southeast, down to Brighton, right then up to the north, so Lancashire, parts of Yorkshire, the West Midlands, the northwest. So all over the country, we've got coverage now for next year. Excellent. And will people have a choice of where they can um, where they can work? Yeah, so you can either choose up to three force areas, so you can say I might want to work in one of these three areas, or if you're totally flexible, then you can say I'll go anywhere. Oh, super. And how many uh, people are you looking to recruit in the next uh, next, in, next intake? So next intake for next July, we're about 230 coming into the programme. Um, so you'll be one of a, a cohort of 230 if you join us next year. Wow. It's a, it's a big intake. Yeah, and we've grown so much. And I think that's just by virtue of um, the, how good the people are that have joined our programme and how... Uh, how good people think the program is because our first year we were um, 67, our second cohort that have just landed this year 112, and you know next year looking at doubling that number. And it's just by virtue of how good the people are that get onto this program, and then how good the program is and what we're able to deliver for them. Excellent. So moving on then to the applicants, what sort of people are you looking for? Sure. I think um, for me the most important thing is that people have a real passion to make a difference for people and they are driven by a mission to see a difference in society. Um, so when I talked at the beginning about us really wanting to transform those communities, reduce crime, increase public confidence in policing, that's about making people's lives better. And I think that's really important for anyone. I think on top of that, you need to be resilient. You need to have real problem solving skills because you're going to be dealing with problems that have been there day in, day out for many years, and you're there to help solve them with your team. Uh, and then I think it's really important that you've got great communication skills, because ultimately policing is all about people. You're spending every day with people. Uh, it's not spreadsheets and photocopying. You're not stuck in the office all day. You're going to be spending time with, uh, with the public and with your colleagues, so you've got to be able to communicate. Do people need any previous experience of policing, whether as a um, community support officer or something? No, like that? not at all. Definitely not. So our first cohort, actually, well over half of them said they wouldn't have thought about joining the police, but for police now. And the vast majority of our cohorts don't have any policing experience at all. So you can you have any degree background. And we've had people that have been architects and classic language scholars and computer scientists and engineers as well as lawyers and uh, criminology people as well. But you can have any, I think we've got someone with a PhD in English, Victorian English literature this year. You know, you can have any kind of academic background and you don't need to have been a police officer before the vast majority, or police community support officer or a special constable or anything like that. The vast majority of our participants haven't had any of that sort of experience. Are there any restrictions on um, degree requirements in terms of a 2-1 or? So you've got to have, uh, or be expecting at least a 2-1 in your undergraduate degree. Uh, you've also got to have a grade C in English, GCSE, and they're the two academic requirements we've got. So if you're on track for a 2-1 or you've already got a 2-1 or above, then uh, you're someone that we want to speak to. And we have lots of listeners in, uh, in the EU. Are you open to people who are able to work in the UK? So what you need to do to join the police service, you need to have the right to work in the UK without needing to be sponsored or any of those sorts of factors. So, so long as you have uh, a, a full right to work in the UK, 
uh, then you can join the police service. One thing that we do get asked is obviously you have to go through a vetting process. So policing, you obviously get access to people and places that most people don't. And it's a very trustworthy profession. Uh, you need to be someone who can really be trusted. So you do go through a national security vetting process. And to be able to do that, you need to have been resident in the UK for the previous three years. Excellent. So moving on then to the application process itself, what does uh, what does your application process look sure. like? Sure. Well, do... it's not easy is the first thing to say. Um, so it is a pretty tough process because the program and the job is tough itself. So but nonetheless, you've got to do uh, so initially an online application where we ask you a bit about yourself and your background. Uh, and then you move on to doing a situational judgment test and verbal and numerical online tests. And they're the sort of things that you expect from any uh, any graduate employer. Then you move on to doing a video interview. So some of our team would interview you on a Skype interview to uh, to ask you some questions. And then if you get through there, then you move on to our assessment center, which is a day long assessment center where we put you through your paces, giving you various problems to solve and uh, an interview and various other scenarios that we put you through. Excellent. And uh, what is it you're looking for at each of those stages then? So with the online application, how do people, um, how can you stand out when you submit your online application? So I think the best way to stand out with any of the assess any parts of the assessment is first of all to demonstrate your commitment to making a difference uh, in those communities that need us most. I think as well, anything that you can demonstrate to show a commitment to public service. So if you've volunteered somewhere, if you've um, been involved in any sort of community outreach work, that's all really fantastic. So that's the first thing, a real commitment to public service. I think the second thing is that when you're thinking about any of the scenarios that you're set is to think about how you would solve the problems because that's the uh, really critical bit we're looking for and also how you would communicate them. So these are all just real leadership skills that we're looking for. And the uh, the video in, uh, interview sounds interesting. Uh, I guess some people might find that a bit daunting. Um, what is it you're you're looking for there? Yeah. Well, what mistakes might people make during the video interview? Well, the team. I can understand why people would think it was daunting. The team made me do a practice one myself the other day, and uh, and if I'm honest, I felt a bit a little bit odd. Um, but once you get into the swing of it, it's actually really easy, and uh, you just pretend that you're talking to. Um, to someone that you respect and that you want to get across your passion to about what uh, what you want to do with yourself um, and just give some thought before you start it the sort of things that we're looking for so how do you demonstrate commitment to public service how do you demonstrate the ability to problem solve how do you just demonstrate the ability to communicate and if you give some thought to those things beforehand then you'll be absolutely fine uh, and it does feel a little bit weird doing it but once you get into it you'll be absolutely fine Super. And um, moving on to the assessment centre then, what, uh, how does the assessment centre um, make up over the course of the day? What, uh, what are the different aspects of sure. it? Sure. So you'd be expected to do a couple of role plays. So we put you into a realistic situation that you might come across as a police officer in a neighbourhood team. Uh, so you get a couple of role plays where we do that. And we also have a couple of other scenarios as well. So presentation skills might come into it as well as some other sort of testing that you'd expect to see. Also, you would be expected to do an in-tray exercise. So what that means is you get a whole load of material to read through and consider and analyze. Uh, and then we ask you um, what decisions you would make at the end of it. So it's probably a good idea to get practice at reading material, uh, lots of it, and making decisions from it, um, and extracting information from pieces of, in, uh, pieces of paper, documents, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then the last thing is an interview. And again, the sort of things that we'll be asking you is how do you demonstrate your passion for what we're talking about here? So about transforming challenged communities and making a difference. How have you given examples in the past of solving problems? How have you given exam can you give us an example of where you've shown real leadership? Um, and so if you start to think through, and on our website, you'll find our competencies. And if you start to think through the kind of things that we're looking for through those competencies, I think then have a good practice at that and you'll be in really good shape for it. No, that's great advice, sir. And the role plays sound uh, particularly interesting. Is there any way you'd recommend people can practice those or just uh, make sure that they're going to be uh, fully up to, up to skilled when they, when they go in to do one? Yeah, the role plays are fantastic, actually, and they are realistic about the sort of stuff that you'll be dealing with. So 
um, they're a great test of um, how suitable you are for the role. But they're also quite fun as well. And what I would suggest is to go in them with a really open mind and remember that the person across from you, it could be it could be a member of the public, it could be a colleague, it could be uh, someone from a local partner agency, it could even be a victim of crime. And just be prepared to face uh, anyone across the desk and keep a really open mind. And just think about uh, one of the things that I always say is that if you were a police officer and you were thinking about the people that you were dealing with, if you treat every victim like it was your mother and every suspect like it was your brother, then you can't go far wrong. And that level of empathy is what we're looking for. Excellent. No, that sounds, that's, uh, again, that's really good advice. And with the assessment centre, is it um, just one in London that people will be coming down for for the day? That's right. This year, everything's in London. So we'll be coming down for the full day uh, and we we'll put you through your paces in one day. Ah, oh, very good. So uh, some great advice there, listeners, for uh, how to perform at your best. And if you were to give uh, you know, one piece of advice for people to, who are going to be applying, Dave, what would it, what would it be? Uh, I think the top tips would be to, first of all, be yourself. Um, what we find is that people who come in with lots of trying to sort of fake it till they make it or trying to appear to be someone different, we usually get under, the, under that. And uh, actually the people who've just come across really genuine and authentic do really, really well. And the second thing is just to prepare and have a think about those competencies before you arrive with us on the day. And just start to think about the things you've done in the past that can really show off how brilliant you are. Great advice there. And listeners, it's always, you need to make sure you know what the competencies are for each company you apply for and make sure that you've got at least a couple of questions for when you get asked them because uh, you will definitely get asked. So Dave, unfortunately, time is running away with us. Before we finish though, let's move on to the weekly staple questions. So putting you on the spot now, what one book would you recommend that our listeners should read? Uh, well, I'm going to be really bad and choose two if I can. So my two books would be Love's Executioner and Other Tales of Psychotherapy by a guy called Irvin Yalom. Uh, it's a really beautifully written book with some beautiful stories in it. Uh, and the second one is The Chimp Paradox by a guy called Steve Peters, which just uh, really helped me uh, get my mind straight for all the sorts of things that I want to do in my life. Ah, brilliant. Yes, he was... Uh... Working with the England football team, uh, I think un un unsuccessfully yeah. given their performance uh, recently at the Euro. That's true. Mate. He's done lots of successful things as well. <laughs> we'll move on from that. Um, and what website, Dave, would you recommend that listeners should visit? So as it's a um, US presidential election year, my website would be 538.com, which is Nate Silver's site. And they uh, do some brilliant statistical analysis and crunching numbers about all sorts of things, but particularly this year, the US election. Oh, so that's a, that's a new one for me, so I will definitely check that out. And listeners, everything we've discussed today and a full transcript and all links to everything will be in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash police now. And final question, Dave, what one tip would you give listeners that they can implement today to help on their job search? So really think about and decide how you want to change even your small bit of the world around you. And once you've got that straight, then the answers to everything else will become clear. I don't think you're going to change the world through spreadsheets and photocopying. So work out how you want to change your bit of the world and then go out and do it. I love it. That's a lovely, lovely piece of advice. And having done, uh, having joined a graduate scheme with lots of spreadsheets and uh, <laughs> photocopying, I uh, definitely agree with that one. So, Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Before we finish, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you and also to find out more about Police Now? So the best way to find out is www.policenow.org.uk on our website, or you can uh, look for us on Facebook or Twitter by searching Police Now. Uh, and at the moment, we've got loads of stuff up there about our summer academy, so you can see the kind of things that we're doing. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with me directly, then LinkedIn is probably the way to go. Dave, thank you so much for appearing on the Graduate Job Podcast. Thanks, James. Many thanks to Dave Spencer. I love doing interviews with graduate schemes where I might be introducing you to companies that you might not necessarily have thought of applying to, especially with schemes like Police Now, but also Frontline, Think Ahead and Teach First, where the work you'll be doing is going to be changing people's lives. If you've not listened to any interviews on those schemes, check out the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash police now, where I've linked them all up. Now, in terms of a key point to leave you with, for me, Joining the graduate scheme at Police Now is a situation where you can't lose. Thinking personally, 
You do two years where you receive amazing training and also have experiences that you just won't or can't get anywhere else. Now imagine how confident you'll be and how you're going to carry yourself two years down the line having dealt with everything that a frontline police officer faces. Imagine how good your communication skills, negotiating skills, leadership skills, you name it. Imagine what they're going to be like after your first two years. Also, think about all the many lives you're going to have touched over this period. If you love it and it's for you, then you've a job for life. And there's nothing stopping you from making it all the way up to commissioner or chief superintendent level. Alternatively, after two years, if it's not for you, you can move on with their blessing. Taking all of those amazing skills with you as they actively help you to try and place you with one of their corporate partners who by then will be fighting over themselves to get you to join. You can't say fairer than that. Have a think. Hopefully this time next year, you'll be one of the successful candidates saying, I would never have joined if I hadn't heard Dave Spencer on the Graduate Job Podcast. Now on that nice warm glow, I'll leave you with two final requests from me. If this episode or any of the other 48 have been useful to you, you can thank me in two ways. One is to do the survey at graduatejobpodcast.com slash survey. And the other is to leave me a review on iTunes. Now, Apple puts lots of weight to iTunes reviews and it keeps me nice and high in the charts. So please fire up iTunes and leave me a review. I'll love you forever. Now, one review to leave you with has been left over on Stitcher Radio. If you listen there, don't forget to leave me a review there as well. It's from Hartigan28, who said, Brilliant show, very informative, really helped me with my applications and the episodes on the issues surrounding applications such as time wasting, fear, etc. were very helpful. Almost feels like cheating. Cheers, Hartigan, really appreciate it. Links for how to leave reviews are in the show notes again, so check out graduatejobpodcast.com slash police now. So all that's left to say is do join me next week when we reach the 50 episode threshold. It's a special one, so I'll keep it under wraps. I hope you enjoyed today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.